How APE was specifically created by Adam Aaron and AMC to crush the shorts. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. So as Akash Chan tweeted, he said, well, well, well. It turns out APE was specifically designed to hurt short sellers shorting AMC. He said, please continue to spread your FUD that the company and its directors are trying to hurt us. So from the ongoing AMC lawsuit, there's been some additional documentation filed of internal discussions and internal presentations at AMC. These discussions and presentations talk about APE, why they wanted to implement APE, and what the side effects of implementing APE would be. This slide is titled Potential Investor Considerations. It says for index funds, index funds will retain ownership in AMC common stock, but will not be able to continue holding the AP shares, as the AP shares aren't part of that index fund. Any index fund that owns AMC and receives the AP dividend will likely end up needing to sell the AP shares. But for short sellers of AMC common stock may close out of their short positions prior to the ex-dividend day. But short sellers that remain short AMC and don't close out will still need to deliver the AP dividend to the lender and as a result will have two options. Option A, to borrow additional AP shares ID to continue shorting AMC and APE and short additional AP shares to deliver to the stock lender. Or option B, to buy AP shares in the open market to deliver to the same stock lender and on a stock borrow dynamics. There's also a potential for stock lenders to recall their lent shares in advance of the distribution day and post-distribution would expect borrow in the AP shares to be even more constrained than in the common shares as a result of index funds being unable to hold the APEs. At key, that's less funds being able to lend out their shares to short sellers because obviously more shares will be held by retail investors. So we can see from this confidential document, there was definitely a plan to try and reduce the short interest in AMC by issuing these AP shares because they knew that upon the issuance of AP, the short sellers would either close out of their short positions or have a much harder time continuing to short both AMC and AP. But not only that, discussions ensued about the mechanics and whether short sellers would need to cover and close out of their short positions. Mr. Aaron indicated that they would have to obtain APEs and return them to their lender or close out of their shorts and discussions then ensued as to whether short sellers might muster claims against AMC, because obviously the AP dividend was very bad for the shorts, and the shorts might try and sue as a result. He also says that Mr. Aaron indicated that many retail shareholders were begging for a dividend to validate a proper share count, and that the dividend does not change their economic holdings at all, and Mr. Aaron explained that GameStop did a stock split two weeks before APE and that their short sellers were immediately active on social media in response. Now, I do think it's great to see that even from this internal confidential discussions, they were very much aware on what kind of impact APE would have on short sellers and how short sellers would likely need to close their short positions or face a much greater difficulty in continuing to short. Therefore, clearly, Adam Aaron had the intention to try and do damage to the short sellers, not to dilute retail investors. Many people read the Antara lawsuit and accusations against AMC and took those accusations as if they were guaranteed facts. But now we're starting to see the real, underlying confidential documentation coming to light, and it's now clear to see that, actually, Adam Aaron was trying to damage the shorts. He was actually trying to create a product that would specifically cause these hedge funds to close out of their short positions, or that would make it significantly more difficult for them to continue shorting. So many people automatically assumed that Antara was right and that Adam Aran was against us, when actually Adam Aran has been on our side the entire time. Adam Aran has been equally trying to fight off the shorts, 
away from his company so that AMC can succeed and so the ANC share price can go up even higher and so that even he can make even more money during a squeeze scenario. If Adam Iran's already turned down a billion dollars worth of bribes, he's not going to sell his shares at such a low, low price of five or six dollars per share. He wants to sell his shares over 100, over 200, and over $500 per share. And interestingly, it seems like recent deleting threats against AMC CEO have intensified by short sellers over the last few weeks. This article says the AMC Entertainment CEO, Adam Aaron, has been receiving an increasing number of delete threats that the APEs believe are coming from short sellers targeting the stock. The threats have escalated from social media posts and messages to troubling Twitters. Some have included drama and even threats against Adam Aaron. And sources say that the threats against Aaron have intensified recently as a potential short squeeze of AMC's stock seems real. The short interest remains high and retail investor sentiment is still bullish. And all of that appear is to have enraged short sellers, some of whom are lashing out with threats against Aaron. It says the threats against Adam Aran appear to have come from a small extremist faction of short sellers. Most investors would condemn such threats regardless of their position on AMC stock. Now, obviously, I'm against any kind of deletion threats against Adam Aran or against the short sellers because no one deserves to have those kind of threats made to them. But I do think it's interesting to see that the number of threats made against Adam Aran have increased over recent weeks as the squeeze is getting closer and closer. And as Travis tweeted, it seems the short sellers are also trying to build a collusion or market manipulation case against us to get the AMC stock halted. Short sellers are trying to sneakily ask for advice on AMC as to when they should sell or when they should buy to try and pin us retail investors with a market manipulation case. As Travis tweeted, he said, the Fall Guys likes to ask people tons of questions about trading and feed info back to their headquarters to gather information. And that's obviously why I've never specifically told you to buy or sell, because obviously I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just talking about recent AMC news. I think the short sellers now realize they're trapped and realize the reverse split reduces the number of shares in the float, increasing the volatility in the AMC stock and are now trying to do anything they can to get AMC delisted. Their original plan was to try and sell a box and bankrupt AMC and get it delisted from the New York Stock Exchange, which obviously hasn't worked, especially as AMC will soon be becoming profitable. And therefore, their only way to try and win is to try and pin AMC with a market manipulation lawsuit and hope the stock gets delisted. If they can't do that, the short seller's cash reserves will just dwindle down further and further with these sky-high borrowing fees until they're forced to close out of their short position. When they go bankrupt, and especially as the S&P 500 is currently pinned to its recent high set back in February and looks like the market is just about to turn around and resume its next leg down. As Finance Lancelot tweeted, he said, either we're about to see a breakout rally to 4,400 points and towards a new all-time high, or this is a failed attempt to make new market highs resulting in a new downtrend. And obviously, if this new S&P 500 downtrend is combined with additional rate hikes and combined with not increasing the debt ceiling, the S&P 500 could crash significantly pretty much overnight. Some economists are expecting up to a 45% crash if the debt ceiling is not increased. That 45% crash would take AMC past its lows and back towards 2018, 2017, and 2016 levels in the space of only a few weeks. And that would certainly liquidate a vast majority of hedge funds, obviously causing them to close out of all of their long positions, all of their short positions, and ultimately causing the AMC and GameStop squeezes. Now, I also wanted to quickly talk about some other. AMC manipulation as the APD-ish bull tweeted about. He said we can't let this slide. For some reason, a bunch of manipulated one-star reviews for AMC have been left on Trustpilot. 
AMC is currently rated bad with a 1.7 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot. Now, I don't know about you, but I personally never really had a bad experience at the cinema and really expected this to have a 4 or 5 star rating. What's also really interesting to see is the vast majority of these one-star reviews have been left over the past few weeks between March of 2023 and April and May of 2023. People are trying to convince you to think twice before going to AMC, and it's coming from accounts that only have one singular review. It's likely these accounts are being created to manipulate AMC's rating on Trustpilot to try and degrade the company, and therefore, I urge you to leave a real recent experience at your local AMC theaters on Trustpilot. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.